Have you been trying to use the sensors to make the contraption you dreamed about, but they didn't work as expected and you ended up thinking they don't make any sense, or? If that's your case, I've got you covered. Let's discuss all of the three sensors that Astroneer offer us in a simple way so that you can step up your automation and create the craziest contraptions. This is Kuya Game, subscribe for weekly Astroneer contents if you wish, and we're starting right now! Astroneer offers us sensors to monitor items and trigger events based on that. The sensors that we have up to these days are three. Power sensor, storage sensor, and battery sensor. The first thing sensors do is to monitor an item. Power sensors test power. Is there any power or not? And based on that, they generate an input to trigger an action. Battery sensors test batteries, including vehicles' batteries. Is the battery completely full? Is it completely drained? Is it charging? Storage sensors test storage. Is it full? Is it empty? Is it half empty? For each sensor, we can scroll through different options that allow us to decide what they should be monitoring. The second thing they do is to send a signal or not based on their monitoring. They do so by means of this pin. You can attach something directly on top of the sensor and stack them. Or you can pull the wire and attach it to the item that you want your input to get to. You can make branches to have a tighter setup and have multiple pins coming out of one branch. This will allow you to trigger multiple items at the same time. Unfortunately, you cannot make other astroneers to stumble on these cables. I tried that. Keep in mind that only the main pin can transmit the signal, while the other ones are just auxiliary pins that cannot activate anything. Let's see the specific controls for each sensor, and later we're gonna see an application for some of these settings. Power sensor. This is pretty straightforward and I think it's the easiest to use. Power gain. We get a signal only when the sensor feels power coming in. Power lost. We get a signal only whenever we have a loss of power. And power gain or lost. We get a signal on both of the preceding scenarios, whenever the sensor detects power coming in or detects a loss of power. Can you feel the power? Oh, let's go ahead before I think above myself. Storage sensor and battery sensor have similar options, but of course, one tests storage while the other tests batteries. Storage sensor works on both storage and platforms. We can safely demonstrate this with some harmless dynamite. Full or empty? Whenever the storage gets completely full or empty, we get a signal. Full or not full? Whenever the storage gets completely filled up or is no more 100% filled up, we get a signal. Empty or not empty? Whenever the storage gets completely empty or is not empty anymore. It's like some primary school exercise. If Kuya Game has two pieces of organic and the storage can keep eight, how many can he still add before the storage is full? Something like that. I wish we had explosions at school. Pretty easy, just be careful to not get confused by the negative names like not full. Are you not full or are you not not full? They can really get confusing sometimes. It's like everyday life when people ask you, are you a fool? Wait, they don't ask you? Am I the only one that gets asked every day? Oh. Battery sensors work very similarly, but of course they test batteries. They even work on batteries grouped together on the same platform and on vehicles too. But can we spend a second to say how bad this vehicle looks like? <laughs> Look at this seater sitting in between slots. I don't know, it just feels wrong to me. Anyway, let's discuss the possible states of the battery sensor. For example, if we set it to charge or empty, 
we get a signal anytime the battery gets completely charged or completely drained. Charged or not charged, we will get an input anytime the battery is 100% charged or starts to drain. Empty or not empty, we get an input anytime the battery is 100% empty or starts to be charged, so it's not empty anymore. Keep in mind that the sensors will send a signal only when there is a change in the status of the item they are monitoring, like it's also described in the status of the sensor. For example, on this battery that is 100% charged, it says waiting for the battery to be fully drained, and that is what would trigger the sensor. But if we place it onto this battery that is fully empty, it says waiting for the battery to be fully charged. So the description is actually useful, but be aware that it changes based on the current state of the item that you're monitoring. And now let's put to practice what we have learned with a practical application. We are going to make an automated useless contraption. Uh, basically, we need to power a furnace that will produce carbon used to power the furnace itself. It's like a circle, we're investing in carbon to produce carbon. Very useful indeed. I don't see why you shouldn't have this contraption at your base. So we're not really accomplishing anything other than learning how these sensors work. I feel like I have motivated you enough to make this useless contraption, so let's get it started. Uh, I'd be a perfect salesman. Here's my wonderful contraption. Let me introduce you the carbon maker and consumer wonderful farm thing of doom. The furnace transforms organic into carbon and receives power from this battery. The battery is charged by the solar panel. The problem with solar power is that they don't work overnight. I'm not really sure why, but you get what you get. This gives us the opportunity to see a classical application for a power sensor. Let's build it together. Large platform B with a battery. Platform with a solar panel. Now let's add a power generator. This bad guy will do the night shift while the solar panel is sleeping. Let's give it a piece of carbon because it's hungry. Let's place a small storage with some carbon so that it's automatically replenished. And here comes in our power sensor set to power gain or loss. You can scroll through the functions through the F key if you're on a computer. Let's connect it to the platform through a power extender. This will ensure that power will not come back to the first platform. Make sure you drag the connector from the extension cord to the platform. Connect the line to the generator. Now every time the sun goes down, we will have a power loss. This will trigger the sensor that will in turn activate the power generator. In this way, the battery will keep on charging. Make sure that when the solar panel is providing power, the generator is off. Otherwise, you can manually turn it off by pressing the F. Now for the next section we have another large platform B with a smelting furnace and two small storages. I'm going to switch the furnace off for now. Let's connect it and place down some organic to supply the furnace. Time for our second sensor, the battery sensor. Since the furnace consumes all of the 5 units of power dispensed by the battery, and we're also going to add an auto arm later on that will consume one more unit of power, I don't want the furnace to run when the battery is completely drained and not to mention it's impossible. It is start again once the battery is fully charged. To do this, we're going to use a battery sensor. Let's stick it directly onto the battery and set it to charged or empty. Connect the pin directly to the furnace, just anywhere, as long as it's on the furnace itself. Anytime the battery is fully drained, the furnace will stop to work and anytime the battery is fully charged, the furnace will start running again. Our last section will teach us how to use a storage sensor. Let's add a platform with an auto arm, let's make sure it's off, and now let's connect the power. The green area should reach into the storage. The more slots are covered, the better. 
and the blue one should be able to reach into this storage. I'm going to add a piece of carbon in its filter to make sure it's gonna grab carbon only. Now it's time to add the storage sensor to this storage. You can attach it anywhere on its side. Make sure it's set to full or empty and drag the pin onto the auto arm itself. Anytime the storage gets empty, auto arm will transfer carbon on it until it gets full. Now in order to see what happens overnight, let's wait for the sun to set. We're not in a hurry, we can just wait. Oh great, nighttime has come so fast, incredible! We can see that overnight our solar power doesn't work of course. When that happens, we need to turn on our generator to provide power. At the same time, we don't want it to keep running when there is sun, because it consumes carbon and we're stingy. That's what the power sensor is working on. And there we go, the furnace transforms organic into carbon, which is used to feed the furnace itself. While I'm sure we can all appreciate the usefulness of this contraption, more importantly we have applied our knowledge of these sensors to automate something. You can try to make something on your own even more useful, if you think it's possible. Let me know in the comments below what you would like to make and feel free to post pictures on my Discord server, you will find the link in the description of the video. I'm curious to see if anyone actually builds this useless contraption. Please like the video if it was helpful and don't forget to subscribe for weekly astronaut content. And you are welcome to join the channel as a member to get exclusive badges and contents in addition to supporting my videos. This was Kuya Game, stay safe.